Welcome back to Malacca Motorsports, I'm Stav, and today we're going to be doing the Cyvex relocation into the glove box. Um, I want to say, start off by saying this video is going to be a lot of fun for a lot of you guys who were asking for some more of the technical side. In the first couple of videos, I didn't really want to discuss the technical side because it'd be pretty dumb to do it if it didn't end up working. But now that we found that everything works, the dash works, full integration, Cyvex read, the, the dash is happy, I mean everything on the car absolutely works now. So now when we redo the harness for the fact that we talked about in the last video that we didn't remove some of the connectors and then on top of that since we got it running and we've tested the car for about 5,000 miles we also want to add features to the ECU that we weren't using before for you know for like nitrous control and you know surge tanks and a lot of other things that we'll talk about. Uh, but let's start off by saying thank you guys for all the uh, comments and likes in our last video if you haven't liked and subscribed you can do that now uh in our last no we i think in our last video uh we had over 600 messages uh uh in between emails dms uh you know we and we tried to we I definitely responded to everyone and honestly not a single negative comment even though i did ask for them uh and the second thing is this will be a very good video for you guys um George is not in this video, so that means it's going to be a much less boring video, actually. No negative 24 valve talk, but uh, all joking aside, uh, let's get started. I want to show you guys what we're going to work on today. This will probably be like a two or three part series, uh, fully remaking the harness, and I want to go through and show you guys like uh, almost every step of the way because a lot of people have asked for it, a lot of, you know, in, in DMs because you know, um, you know, wiring is something that a lot of even myself up up until six months ago was kind of scared to approach. And, and you know, even though I have wired things like boost gauges and fuel pumps and stuff like that, but completely taking on a car of a 2018 and then you know trying to merge it with a 2003 engine is kind of a scary, daunting task because everything is more expensive. There's a lot more wires, a lot more uh, modules that need to talk to each other. But uh, you know, let's get started, guys. As you guys see, we have the ECU here. And we're going to be relocating that into the glove box, um, you know, freeing up some space here and completely remaking this harness. Some of the connectors we did, and when you guys, and I show you guys, it's, it's pretty like abysmal. I mean, this is definitely not, don't ever pay for this type of work. George didn't pay me. Actually, yeah, he really didn't pay me for any of this stuff. But, uh, you know, everything works. Uh, you know, we, we basically made this harness like we spoke about before. Just to essentially, you know, we you know we did it as cheaply as possible because we didn't we, we knew we were gonna mess up the harness trying to make it ourselves, but we wanted to make sure it at least worked. The car started and apparently started on the first try. And since then, the last five thousand miles, we really refined everything. The car, I mean, runs and drives, flex fuel, everything works. Um, you know, we don't really have any erratic dash lights, which you would think when you you know go from a pesky five cylinder to a nice you know strong VR6 engine, but. Um, yeah, uh, so today we're going to be starting with this engine harness. This is an engine harness that George picked up from Assam and Ayabed Industries. I believe it came from a crashed RS3. So, you know, a uh, five-cylinder had to lose its life for us to put a, a VR6, and, you know, we're perfectly okay with that. As you guys see, my uh, abysmal of a table here of just random connectors, injector connectors, you know, pressure connectors. We have basically every connector we need to redo this harness. You know, alongside our very basic crimp tools for Deutsch connectors and, you know, a lot of other stuff that we'll get into. Um, you know, uh, we ended up getting most of the connectors here. We ended up getting them from bmotorsports.com. That's where we got the last stuff. It ends up like, I, th I believe they're out in Virginia, really fast shipping. We had, you know, you know, they've always been great to us. So we basically bought more stuff and it came within three days. And then all the wires... You know, all the different wiring gauges and everything. We bought it from Pro Wire USA. They're not a sponsor or anything, but, uh, you know, you, you always got to give a shout out when you get really good service. And uh, I'll be showing you guys today, like, uh, some of our terminal release tools that we use here, uh, you know, to deep pin the harnesses. Because a lot of people ask us, because, you know, there's a, obviously you can go snap on and buy, a, you know, $700 set. But I'm using a $40 set that we buy off Amazon Prime, and it seems to work just fine. And honestly, 90% of this is, you know, not, not useful because basically, you know, they're for all types of different connectors. And Volkswagen and Audis tend to use a lot of, like, the same stuff. So, you know, stuff like this will just work for 90% of the stuff you're actually doing. Um, I want to show you guys, I made this chart over here, which is um, Stav's to-do list. So, let's talk about it in full here. So as you guys see, this is the list that we made. Um, you know, this is my stops to do list. Some of the things that I have to do for this car. 
Um, you know, I actually am very surprised after we made it. I kind of like in my mind, I was like, oh, we're only like adding like four or five things, but in reality, it ends up being uh, 12 things, but uh, which is subject, subject to change. We may add or remove some things, but for the most part, I believe we're just gonna be adding uh, coolant pressure sensor, very important for like high horsepower cars. Sixth, obviously sixth injector, six coil pack, something these cars never came with because they're uh, pesky little five cylinders. Turbo speed sensor, we'll know when we're in the efficiency range of the turbo. And you know, there's a lot of safeties and fail safes in the ECU. Nitrous, another great feature they're gonna be using. Uh, George wants to be like Stav, you know, just wanna throw that out there. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, the ECU is a passive progressive controller, so it would be uh, very fun to be using that. EMAP, back pressure, we'll be able to know exactly when we are pushing the turbo too far and there's too much back pressure in the motor, which could cause to a motor failure and a lot of other things. So five bar MAP sensor, for the amount of boost we're gonna be running. We, want, we don't want any limitations. We should be fine with a five bar uh, resistor for the alternator. We're gonna be wiring a, you know, the old uh, RS3, the old 2018 RS3. Uh, the RS3 is a digital signal. We're gonna be converting to an old analog style signal. Uh, and I'll show you guys that, that re requires a resistor in, in line. Knock sensors, kind of con controversial because a lot of people with modified cars either don't run them, especially on E85, or you know, like they'll just turn them off because a lot of ECUs, um, especially like uh, for a long time, they didn't have a knock control or uh, you couldn't check the knock levels in the ECU. So Cyvex happens to be very advanced and has all these features and we plan on using them. EGT, pretty self-explanatory. Flex fuel, something we are using now that we wired in, but we will be re relocating it to the trunk on the return line of the surge tank. I wanna get it out of the engine bay, clean it up. It's kind of right now underneath the intake manifold on return from the fuel rail. It'll just make it easier one less uh, chance of um, leaking and uh, definitely make it a lot easier for us. And like I was saying, we're gonna be going to a radium surge tank uh, uh, staged for three pumps. I'm gonna show you guys, George will do the installation and I'll show you guys the wiring because we're not gonna be running three pumps at all times, it's not necessary, but I'll show you guys uh, how we have the ECU control all three pumps. So uh, let me, let's go to what we're gonna be removing, the DI injection, DI fuel pressure. Our, um, the R, uh, R30 does not run it, R32 motors. That's something that newer motors have, like the RS3, and uh, even the 3.6 VR6 has them, but we're not using that. Alternator wiring, intake manifold flap, uh, you know, coolant switch pump, all things that we no longer use, we no longer have, we don't have an intake manifold flap. The coolant switch pump was necessary with the uh, RS3 to help uh, circulate, because again, the RS3 has three radiators, has one in front of the uh, left tire, uh, front right tire and the big radiator in the middle so it just helps circulate it but with 105 degree temps george has been driving the car through the summer we really didn't have any overheating issues uh so uh you know we eliminated that uh, exhaust cam sonar b that's going on because again we're going to be running a whole new setup lsu 4.902 sensor um that's going to be uh, eliminated because we're running an ngk ntk sensor so it's a completely different wiring uh, we have a pretty nice connector for that. I'll show you guys that when we get to it. Exhaust flap, send map sensor, send ACT. Again, this is all subject to change. Now, we're not just gonna eliminate it, cut it out the harness, because we may just repurpose a lot of the three and four wire systems to work for what we're gonna be doing. Uh, we'll see as we get to that point. But for right now, uh, this is just the, the, the list that came easy to my head. Um, whoever wrote 12 valve for the win is probably really smart and very good looking. Uh, and then this is just the pinout for the um, typical three pin sensor. I have one, let's see, right here. I'll show you guys. This is the standard connector that a lot of pressure sensors you guys see, like if you buy AEM sensors, SSI, Haltech sensors, TI, they all use this three pin standard connector. Uh, pretty standard like in the industry, pretty easy to get. And I, I always forget which one is power, which one's signal, so I wrote it up here so I could see it. But uh, yeah, I just put this up here for you guys and it ends up, looks like it's gonna be beneficial to me because I'll be able to cross things out as we get to it. But for right now, uh, this is the list we have and uh, let's get started. I mean, let's start, let's start chopping the harness up. Snip, snip.
looked like 30 seconds worth of work ended up turning into three hours so removing the sheathing took a quite a bit of time because this stuff is on heavy duty you don't want to obviously cut or you know nickel wire because that could be an intermittent signal issue um but end up finding out what connector goes to what every single connector in this harness has been figured out uh, which is something i didn't even do the first time because cyfix doesn't actually reuse every single thing that uh the factory uh, ec uses so, so uh, everything that cyfix is not reusing for performance i on the original harness i just left to the side because i had no idea what it goes to we don't have a daza motor sitting here on the side to plug it into and find out exactly where, where it belongs uh but thanks to our buddy david fish in the east coast he was able to send me these uh, diagrams for the ECM. I mean, it tells you everything. Like you look up uh, manifold pressure sensor, it'll tell you the, the color of it. So you can look through the harness, find that color, and we labeled it. So we're just going one by one, uh, double checking all our work and ended up being correct. Uh, which, you know, again, with Cyvex, we're able to change the config, uh, pin and, uh, configuration. We can always change this here and then change it in the ECU. But I kind of want to leave everything alone that we can. You know, we don't have to completely modify everything. If we're able to reuse portions of this, I definitely want to do it that way. And it's always great to know what we're getting into before we start. Because, you know, once we start removing the connectors and we just have a long strand of wire, it, that's when the confusion will come. Especially if you don't know that this pin goes to the map sensor, you know, so... This really, really helped me out. I can tell you this, six months ago, I didn't have access to this, and this, this I would have paid a lot of money to have this, because honestly, this is a lifesaver. Uh, you know, we were able, it basically tells you every single thing down to the color code, and you know, every, and obviously the, uh, there was no two colors alike, no two pin connected that were alike, so it was really easy to figure out exactly where what goes where. And I can tell you this, a lot of this is gonna go away. We're really gonna clean up a lot of this harness. We're gonna make it smaller in some areas. We're gonna be able to rerun it nicer, uh, cleaner, you know, out of the way, that, you know, something that we didn't do the first time because we only, you know, un unwrapped about half the harness. So we kind of didn't know what was going on here, where it was spliced, where they were joining five volts, where they were joining 12 volts here. That was the name we now now we're able to see exactly how everything goes you know in the original harness i'm not gonna lie uh if you would ask me an hour uh three hours ago what gives power to the coil packs i would say this connection that goes into the distribution box it's a thick gauge wire i'm like i automatically assumed uh you know again this is what happens when you assume uh but this is actually ends up just being the power from the alternator about what it, uh to the uh distribution box so you know, what, what I found out was the coil packs, the injectors, the MAC valve all get powered by this great connector that if, you know, if it's in your car right now in the DAZA, it sits on the driver's side frame rail. This is what gives 12 volts to everything. So if you put your motor back in the car, you pull your front end off and you're like, I have no power to my coil packs or my injectors. It's definitely this connector for sure. So definitely give that a look. Um, thank you to David Fish again. I can't say thank you enough. Uh, you know, that, that those pieces of paper, I mean, are, you know, they're, they're definitely a lifesaver. I can tell you that because honestly, now I know where everything is and I know exactly what we can eliminate. So, um, you know, and, and I'm not going to start snipping yet. I want to, I want to run this in the car and, um, you know, George needs to figure out exactly where we're going to put the ECU. He hasn't made up his mind. You want me to just make an extension harness and make a new, you know, uh, extension harness for Cyvex and then just make a new ECU harness, uh, on this side, all depends what George wants, but, uh, Overall, this is going to be a lifesaver. This is a game changer for us. And uh, I hope you guys, you know, follow along. You know, definitely, 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 you know, this stuff is tedious. It takes a lot of time. But, you know, I believe in the long run, this is going to save us a lot of time and a lot of headaches in the future. Being able to now know exactly where every pin goes, knowing that, you know, what, you know, that we're exactly removing the right connector and not just guessing here is definitely going to be a lifesaver. Because again, these harnesses don't come up often. These are brand new cars. There isn't just, you know, a thousand RS3 harnesses going around. I got to make sure that this gets done and done correctly. So, um, yeah, what's name? Let's keep going. Question I get a lot, um, is always what tools are you guys using when doing these wiring harnesses? And, um, a lot of people believe, you know, George and I went and splurge. We got some crazy YouTube money here. So we just buy, you know, the $500 crimp tool and the thousand dollar this and this, but in reality, 
we kind of do everything with very basic tools here. We're not, you know, we're not millionaires. So, we're, you know, we're just like you guys. Well, if you are a millionaire, please send me some money. Uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, I showed you guys earlier my 23-piece terminal kit, which comes from Amazon. You know, you guys can look this up or, you know, message us and we'll definitely give you the link. I have a, you know, again, another crimp tool from Amazon. Uh, you can buy this on eBay. I've seen it. I actually have given people links. Uh, there, This is about $40 for for everything you see here and i would say about 85 percent of the stuff i crimp uh open barrel is definitely with this tool works great you know all the pressure uh, sensors like i showed you earlier i use this this is for like the deutsch connectors like in here these are also really nice because essentially these are double sealed so you know if you do power wash or engine bathe you know go through rain you're not going to have misfires and you know all the other stuff uh you know a sensor not reading because it's double sealed and they actually work really really well and what's great about them is they're kind of interchangeable if you want to go from a four pin to eight pin you just remove it but change the body and go to the larger body so again you know we're not working with great tools here we're very basic i use a harbor freight multimeter um, these are essentially five dollars each i think sometimes they actually if you spend a certain amount they give them to you for free i think that's how we got two of them because uh you know like and it's so cheap that basically i end up modifying the end of one of these just to put on like the uh amp super seal which is on the cyvex so you know it goes into the pin so cheap we don't care about modifying it you know basic little uh, flathead screwdrivers here flathead little pick uh a wire stripping tool i think this is about ten dollars so overall i probably have a hundred to 115 dollars for the tools here you know yes if you were doing this professional definitely you know look into you know the the snap-on of um of wire terminal tools buy the dmc crimp tools yes because you're going to be doing this every day you should you know you should definitely invest in your profession but for the local hobbyists like us you know the guy that's doing you know repairing a, a crimp on one of his wiring harnesses while you know he maybe he damaged it removing it or it was damaged when he bought the car these all tools suffice because you know i was able to make george's other harness now like the overall quality wasn't great because we didn't use like quality heat shrink but you know all the crimps work they didn't come out they weren't just falling out randomly it was a very tight crimp it's not really like you know again this tool works and most people end up using them it's a very uh universal tool and there's a lot of tutorials online on how to use it if you guys want me to do a tutorial i'll do it but uh again very um very easy tools very basic and you know this is what we're doing in the home garage and i wanted to show you guys because you know, it's it's easy when you have the best of everything, but sometimes, you know, in certain situations, you don't always have the right tool and you got to make it work for what you need at the moment. Uh, I can tell you that we've done that many times and I invested in these tools and honestly, they're working great. So hopefully you guys uh, look into these if, you know, when you guys do your wiring adventure and uh, let me know how it works out for you. All right, guys, so uh, we're done with this video. Um, I hope you guys liked what you saw. I mean, I know this is not the most action-packed video, but a lot of you guys have been asking in our, in our previous videos, please go more in depth, you know, because you have a lot of questions. I hope we answered a lot of them today. We're gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I have plan on answering a lot more of them in the next video as we go more in depth and actually show the wiring, the crimping, and everything else that goes along with it. Uh, I hope you guys liked it. If there's something you didn't see or you wanna see, please put in the comments below, tell us. If you have a negative comment, make sure you also put it in the, in the comments below. If you don't like George, make sure you don't put, you put that comment uh, below. So um, thank you guys for watching. I'm looking forward to the next video and continuing this harness because uh, we need to get this baby firing.